This past weekend, Rise of Kingdoms held an in-person event in Frankfurt, Germany, and today we're going to go over all the different news that was announced at this in-person event. A lot of it is actually information that we covered already that was revealed at the LA Player Meetup, but a lot of this information is very important, so there are a lot of things that I want to touch on. So without further ado, what's going on, guys? Cheers. Now, really quick, all the information from this video actually comes from another Rise of Kingdoms YouTuber who is actually at the event. They go by the name of frog boy and i gave them a shout out last time when they posted footage of the la player meetup so please go ahead and check out their channel it will be linked in the description below i am not going to be showing the footage of this video i'm just going to give you guys what they said my thoughts and opinions and if you want to watch the entire actual event it's about 20 minutes long and it'll be on their youtube channel so go ahead and watch it over there while you're over there drop a thumbs up on their video and if you appreciate breaking news for rise of kingdoms make sure you drop a thumbs up on this video as well and consider subscribing to my channel as well too anyway without further ado let's take a look at one of the first things that was announced here and as you can see this is a zenith of power city skin and this was actually already revealed on the social media accounts for rise of kingdoms this is the anniversary zenith of power event city theme now i actually think this city theme is really cool obviously this is going to be some sort of you know sailboat pirate ship something like that it looks like there's possibly a unicorn on the front as well so this is probably going to be a really cool looking city skin of course we see universal 12 percent troop defense and the cost is 10 percent cav attack and you also get five percent action point recovery so extremely good stats on this city skin of course defense is a little bit more valuable than attack but not as valuable as health and this is a generalization of course in some instances you will want attack in some instances you will want defense but i actually think that this city skin is going to be very very powerful over the course of the next 12 to 18 months i personally think that we're going to be straying away from skill damage more and more and more and i'm actually going to post a video about that over the next couple of days and in the event that that does occur players are going to want to use twilight falls as a city skin less and less and less and city skins that give you universal stats for all your different armies are going to be the number one best thing that you can use for open field fighting now if you are a rally or garrison lead and you run a rally or garrison for multiple troop types then of course this is a great city skin and you don't have to like swap in between your archer set and your infantry set things like that of course if you're a cavalry main then this is not going to be uh, great for you but i think this is a great universal city theme to have is it a must have city theme i don't think so i don't think it's like so insane that like regular players need it of course if you are a whale then you know the uh ocean theme is very fitting here i think that this will be a very good city theme moving forward especially if you're still rocking the twilight falls even though this is minus 10 percent cav attack it's still 12 percent cav defense right so even for cavalry you still get a benefit here you're trading attack for defense and you're getting more defense than you're losing attack so really it's like this seems like a really powerful city skin uh I personally wish I could get my hands on it honestly but I don't think that I, I really need it to be fair also if you already have like a really good health city skin for a troop type that you main then you might not need this right if like if you have a zenith of power for example I have the zenith of power that gives me 10 percent infantry health I don't think I necessarily need this this, but you know for open field fighting for different troop types it would be great next up we actually have a silhouette of one of the new archer legendary commanders coming to the game they didn't reveal if this was the mightiest governor commander they didn't reveal if this was the wheel of fortune commander they didn't reveal who this is their name their civilization any historical significance behind them I will say that the silhouette of their bow looks very similar to the silhouette of the bow on Artemisia here and it's also worth noting that she is in the background here which I don't they've been putting a lot of emphasis on Artemisia like Lately. maybe it's because they know that I'm a big fan of her design and and they're just like catering to my demographic perhaps for some reason to me this this feels like it's either a Chinese or Korean commander maybe Japanese I don't know what it is to me it seems like just the the broader build and maybe the hairstyle I don't know it looks sort of like a Yisun Sin or YSG type of commander that's just the vibe that I get I could be completely wrong this is not based on literally any data it's just anecdotally what I feel that this commander might look like so that's my best guess either Korean Chinese or Japanese maybe 
but really we don't know anything else about this it's cool that we got the silhouette obviously we have a bow and it looks like there's a blade back there as well a blade on like the uh on the hilt of this commander so it's going to be cool to see what this commander is but unfortunately we don't have any more information about this commander except for the fact that it is coming in September they confirmed that this commander will come out in September previously I made the prediction that this Archer Wheel of Fortune would come around on October 8th it looks like and, and that was a 70 day release window it looks like they're going for a 56 day release window this time which means this commander if it's coming in September like they said the soonest that we would expect to see this commander would be on September 24th that would be when the wheel of fortune commander arrives okay so that is three weeks from the day that I post this video so start saving your gems if you're interested in the new archer of course at the time of recording this video we don't have any numbers for this commander or what their name even is or anything like that but if you're in the market for a new archer commander save your gems this wheel will probably come I would be willing to bet my money on it that we see it on September 24th I don't see a way that we could see it any sooner than that that would be the fastest commander release that we would have ever seen in rise of kingdoms i think since a manatore so i don't think that will happen September 24th that's my prediction next they actually went over some future plans for rise of kingdoms including VIP 19 tier 6 and new era and smite damage now for everyone who kept getting mad at me for using tier 6 or t6 in my titles in my thumbnails guys that's coming from them okay so I'm kind of it's it's super frustrating to be like they didn't say tier six you're misleading everybody no 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 I'm not they said that okay so very frustrating to be getting those types of comments when it's literally this is the literal producer of the game okay and it's on his slideshow now when these troops come into the game will they be called tier six probably not but when I refer to tier six I'm referring to the same thing that they're referring to okay so we're gonna go over that but also I do just want to stop for a moment and say that the producer of rise of kingdoms actually studied English for the past year to be able to present this to the community in English and it's clear he's still learning English but he's he did a great job and I honestly I find that super impressive because last year they did a meetup in Germany and he presented all this information in Chinese with somebody translating for him and that was fine it's kind of what I expected right I mean they the game is made in China it makes sense that he would speak Chinese that's where he's from right so the fact that he actually spent the last year learning English to present this information and connect directly with the community instead of having to go through a translator I find that super impressive personally as somebody who like casually studied Spanish for six years in high school and college all I can say is hola mi amo omniarch like that's pretty much it okay uh it's pretty embarrassing if I'm being honest with you especially because I live in Queens New York and like the Spanish is is like right up there with Chinese as like some of the most popular languages that are spoken around here but anyway huge shout out to the producer of Rise of Kingdoms because that's really impressive and I love that he's able to like directly communicate this stuff with the community in English as well as Chinese love that love that love that love that the dedication there is very impressive now I know this is mega blurry and we're like zooming in on a video of a video of a video okay so please I, I know that this quality is not going to be great but the first thing that he covered here is VIP 19 and they basically showed off three different things here first of all they showed a new teleportation animation which he said would come to players who've achieved VIP 19. so this to me sounds like it will not be something that you need to you know purchase from a vip shop it sounded based on how they they worded this and and this could be you know these are all things and they also made this very clear he said that all of these things are in the development phase okay so we don't know like until this is in the game this is all just things that they're planning on and working on but not finalized all right so he said that they would be giving a new teleportation animation to vip 19 players it looks really cool it was shown at the la player meetup i think that's great they also showed off in this center panel a sort of a marching animation as well so it's kind of like a i mean to me it looks like some sort of like glow or something like that around this commander who marches across the battlefield which i think is awesome okay so there's the teleportation animation that's like an explosion of fire there it actually looks a little different than in, in the la player meetup at least from what i recall 
and here you could see the actual uh you know glow around the marching commander which i think looks great i think cosmetics is the way to go for vip 19. i, I love to see it i don't want to see any more battle stats i don't want to see any more advantages to vip okay vip 19 getting cosmetic stuff i think is great and then finally we actually have a city skin that is already in the game but the city skin actually has like butterflies going around it according to i think leo was there who was also presenting alongside him and it looks like there was like a butterfly animation here again it's really hard to see from a screen or recording of a screen at a distance but i'm sure when it comes in game we'll be able to take a look and hopefully you know i don't think butterflies are going to be the only thing that are as an option for vip 19 i'm sure there will be other things and i think that's great if they do decide to go the route of a vip shop like a vip 19 shop then what i expect is that there will be some uh, you know different things that you can buy with vip currency or maybe you convert your vip into some other currency or something like that i have no idea but all in all this is the right direction for vip in my opinion next up we have a slide here that talks about tier six and the new era and what you can see the way that it's written i know it's blurry but it says what are the future plans regarding tier six or a five unit type like call of dragons and here we have you know the ones that are highlighted are the most popular player responses unfortunately i cannot read this and i couldn't understand what he said during this part of the video so frog boy if you're watching this or anybody who's there comment down below what he actually said for this slide what is this slide actually showing off i would love to know but one thing that i found super interesting here is that in the video where i discussed tier six units i brought up call of dragons i showed you guys if you go back and watch that video i said listen tier six is not going to be a new tier of cavalry archers or infantry at least based on how they're describing it and i told you guys that most likely what it would be is similar to call of dragons in how call of dragons has four regular tiers of troops and then there's a fifth tier of troop that is unlocked afterwards and based on the wording of this it looks like that's actually what they're considering doing so i feel like i was kind of on the money there and it also sounds like based on what they're saying that this new tier of units is going to be coming with a new era like we already expected and they are really they're really pushing muskets okay they're really pushing muskets and gunpowder that seems to be the primary focus of these new units that they're planning on implementing into rise of kingdoms now this was again they seemed very um hesitant presenting this information at least that's the vibe that i got in the la player meetup it seemed like they were like yeah we're adding tier six we're adding a new era we're adding guns here they're saying like we've talked to the community and we're considering adding this and this is what we're thinking and this is you know that sort of thing and so it seems like um they're being very cautious with this implementation they really want to get it right but i personally think that it's really hard to i mean look when this news first broke at the la player meetup i posted two polls on my youtube channel okay the first one that i asked is what do you think about adding tier six units to rise of kingdoms now this question was very vague because a lot of people probably read this and thought tier six infantry tier six cavalry etc and now we know that is not what's coming to the game but regardless i was still curious to know what the community's thoughts were at the idea of a tier of unit after what we have which they're calling t6 i'll call it t6 as well even though it's not what we would normally expect and with 6200 votes the outcome of this poll was extremely clear crystal clear and i actually took this and sent it to the people that i talked about rise of kingdoms right i am an associate creator with rise of kingdoms they sponsor a few of my videos every month so i have direct contact with them and they actually asked me if i'm being honest with you guys they asked me for the result of this poll which means they're like tapped in they're listening to what the community is asking for and i sent them the screenshot of the results this is the most up-to-date data that i have here and it's abundantly clear that the idea of a tier after five is not something players are interested in in fact 75 percent of players that responded to this did not agree with adding a new tier of unit to rise of kingdoms okay 45 percent of players said they don't want it 30 percent they will straight up quit the game now do I believe these players? No, I don't. I think some of these players, sure, some of them will quit. Will all of them quit? No, probably not. But regardless, the overall sentiment is extremely negative. That much is clear. No matter how you want to interpret this data, no matter how much you want to think that this is like, you know, accurate or not, like this is what people are saying and how they feel. Open and shut case. Following this, uh, this was two weeks ago, I said, what do you think about adding firearms to Rise of Kingdoms? And this one, same thing. You'll see like 
the agree crowd is about identical, right? It seems like fewer players will quit over the idea of firearms, but it's not like they want firearms. They just simply don't want it, right? They, it's not like they'll quit over it, but they don't win. That's how it is. So it's a little bit, you know, it, it's a little bit more in favor of like, okay, like guns aren't going to make me quit, but this is the data. So 77% of people don't want firearms in rise of kingdoms. That's just the data. Okay. 5.6 thousand votes. This is a very strong indication that players don't want firearms. And this was another poll that I sent directly to the people that I have connections with at rise of kingdoms. Like I said, look, here you go. Here's the data. Here it is. This is the most up-to-date stuff. This is what people are saying. So 75% of players don't want another tier of unit. 77% of players don't want firearms in the game. That's just what people are saying. Now, the most interesting thing, uh, this is just data, but the comments are the most interesting thing. So if the developers of rise of kingdoms want more in-depth information, I would say read the comments because people are very, very passionate about this game and they really, really want the developers to listen to what they're saying about this change. Okay. And it seems very clear to me that players just do not agree with the direction that it seems like they want to take the game. So I really hope that they take this into consideration and look like 6,000 votes. That's not that many, right? That's not that many people. It is what it is. Some of these people could have already quit the game and they're just responding to the poll, right? So like, you know, you have to take this with a grain of salt. This is a very tiny fraction of the player base, but I can't imagine that if you took this and extrapolated it out to the community, I don't think the rest of the community is going to fall into this top camp. I think you'll find that it will probably continue to fall into this bottom camp here. And I think that rise of kingdoms is in a really uphill battle. If they want to add muskets, they, they want to add gunpowder and they want to add another tier of unit. Well, you are starting at a position that is extremely unfavorable. And in order to convince the community that they will stick around after making this change, it's going to be really difficult. Honestly, I, I don't, I personally don't see a way that they can do this in a way that won't completely turn off a very large percentage of the player base right so i don't really know what else to say here the data seems crystal clear players don't seem to want a new tier of unit or gunpowder i personally you know i i don't want another tier of unit i just don't would i quit the game over it i don't i don't know probably not it just depends on how it's implemented same thing with guns do i want guns in the rise of kingdoms i think it depends on how they're implemented if they add a whole new style of gameplay with guns i'm not really interested in that okay i like the gameplay of rise of kingdoms i think it's fine i think ranged units already are pushing the envelope for what like i don't really care about ranged either so i don't really want a new style of gameplay if they just added like musketeers and like that sort of thing you know we already have mimed with cannons and gunpowder like if they added guns would i quit no i wouldn't quit do i want it in the game not really but like you know you think of like jack sparrow and like the pirates of the caribbean and stuff like that like if you added like muskets and like those types of like flintlock pistols and stuff would that be cool maybe yeah maybe that could be cool i i would see that would be you know that as a thing sure i guess that would be fine but bringing in a new era bringing in a new gameplay style bringing in tier six not really a fan of that i don't think that's great especially when there's plenty in the game already that is not balanced i mean let's just let's just be honest guys there's a lot in the game that's not balanced you can't use frederick in the open field in 2025 or in 2024 like especially 2025 but like there's a lot that's not balanced in rise of kingdoms already and i think that we need to focus probably on balancing the game a little bit better before we start looking at what's next down the pipeline because it just it feels like it feels like the community doesn't want it it feels like the game's not ready for it truthfully so that's just my opinion on that i don't know how they're going to be able to pull this off in a way that the community is going to like but if you guys want to let me know what you think about this in the comment section below let me know but it seems like this is still on their radar as something that they are considering doing for the game and of course let them know as well um the the developers and you know when they ask for player feedback Give them feedback tell them how you feel about this because that's the only way that they are going to hear you next he brought up smite damage and he didn't actually talk about smite damage necessarily mainly what he was talking about was adding new types of damage to rise of kingdoms and basically what he was saying here is that they are going to continue adding new types of damage to the game but they don't want to add so many types to the game that it makes it confusing and difficult to learn and understand and things like that. Right. And I think that's fine. I think I'm totally fine with that. They added smite damage. It was a hit players like it. Players think it's good. They're adding true damage with these new archers and we'll have to wait and see, but you know, if, if it's good, then it's good. And we'll see how that goes moving forward. You know, some things that I would personally like to see would be some sort of like vampire type of effect where the more damage you deal, the more that you heal yourself. And that would be kind of 
the opposite of the way that true damage is currently working right we know from these new archers that true damage will be based on how much you heal right so you heal first then you deal true damage I would like to see some sort of vampire effect where you deal damage and if you deal like a huge chunk of damage then you heal a nice chunk of health for yourself i think that would be a really nice you know life steal type of mechanic we see that in game in tons of games most rpgs have something like that you know world of warcraft or you know maybe not world of warcraft actually i'm not sure entirely but you have that in like league of legends for example you have that in many other games i think there's a well that's a common feature i don't have to go any deeper than that you guys know what i'm talking about so there's tons of different types of damage that they could add to rise of kingdoms that i think would be fine i think you could even add some Thing like a passive damage where you know there's just like if you walk within a certain radius of a commander maybe they just deal like 50 damage factor every second you're nearby them and it's like it's not enough damage to like really matter on any given turn but if you stand near them for like a minute all of a sudden a third of your health is gone right like that could be something that's just really cool just like this sort of like this i don't know like this decay effect that that is surrounding your your commander or something like that there's tons of different types of damage that they can add i love the idea of new types of damage i think we've had skill damage as the meta for five years now right so like new types of damage i'm down with and not adding too many so that way the game doesn't get too complicated also on board with that love to hear it okay next they went on to talk about game systems okay the first bullet point says new players catching up to older players in season of conquest next they touched on unbalanced matchmaking outcomes in Ark of Osiris then they talked about the increasing popularity of esports have they considered creating more official tournaments or leagues apart from Ark of Osiris and Osiris League then they said why do we have to delete all our resources when we migrate shortcut markers for pre with pretexts and will you make an in-game tool to see all items and statistics so let's break these down one by one what they actually went through the first one is they acknowledge that the gap is getting bigger between newer and older players and how are they going to keep that that in check of course they talked about the commander reset and what they said was perhaps offering a one-time commander reset when you go into kvk3 which makes sense because that's when you get access to season of conquest commanders i think that is fine i personally think that this should be a yearly event where you get one reset per year i think that would make it rare enough and exciting enough where players can you know look forward to it you know players who if you quit the game a long time ago and you come back well you're not going to be in kvk3 and so you'll miss this but you'll probably still want to reset a commander right i think that would be really cool i personally think that they could do this why not just do this for the anniversary right like this is and you can look at my channel i've made multiple videos talking about commander refunds and that is arguably one of the most popular features that players want and so what you have here is an opportunity to really deliver to the community something that they want and what i would recommend is how about every year for the anniversary of rise of kingdoms we celebrate by giving the community a way to reset one legendary every year i think that's fine i don't think that's game breaking i don't think that you know it's this it's going to be this big deal uh, but it will be a way to celebrate the anniversary of rise of kingdoms with players with a way or a feature that they really want right why don't you give the players what they want for the anniversary of the game that way they're around for the next one right i think that would be really great and again this would be it's just it's just you're just farming goodwill right you're just farming the goodwill of the players i don't see why this would be a big deal even still though if we only get it one time at kvk3 that will help new players it means that they can invest in ysg or they can invest in you know alexander the great and then when they get to season three they can choose to reset them or not i also think though that if they are going to give this to the new players at kbk3 they should give it to everyone else who's played the game for six years right like it would be kind of unfair that you look at the older players and say hey thanks for supporting the game for six years you know that feature that you really wanted we are implementing it just not for you that would feel really bad as an older player so hopefully they give this to everyone once and then maybe every you know every time new players hit kbk3 they get this as well that would be cool adjusting the museum they said that they are looking into adjusting the museum and i think that this is an overdue look right the museum system was meant to bring older commanders up to speed and i would say for some commanders it's done that for example alexander the great's relic is very good we have commanders like mehmed who get really great relics but you know other commanders have really awful relics and it's just a waste of currency basically and so it's really frustrating for some commanders to be in in that system and still be some of the worst commanders in the game and on top of that the museum is supposed to balance those older commanders to bring them up to the you know a similar level not up to meta but close to meta usable with the meta adjacent to the meta etc and with that you know it costs so much currency 
that a lot of players you know when the museum system came out it was very popular very players were really happy to see commanders like Mehmed get a really powerful relic obviously we got defense and skill damage for YSG people loved that uh but as the system has gotten older and older and they've added more and more tiers and more and more commanders the cost of the additional relics has gotten so much more expensive and the way to get those coins has not in improved at all and so for a system that's supposed to bridge the gap it's actually failing to do that right and that's really unfortunate I think what they can do is you know every kvk make that currency very farmable make that currency in abundance and probably lower the cost of some of these new relics and maybe refund players that have invested in them some percentage of the coins that they spent moving forward helping new players unlock tier 5 faster we've talked about this on the channel before they are considering doing that and i think that that is a good idea i've also heard a lot of players give negative feedback on this saying hey i just rushed tier 5 what do you mean that people are going to get it for free so i get that but really i think that there needs to be a catch-up mechanic and at the end of the day you know should they compensate players who rushed it sure but should I get compensated even though I rushed it five years ago not really so that's going to be a hard problem to solve and then finally we have fast track solution for catching up on equipment progression I think that this is good as well personally I don't I mean the equipment system I don't think is in the worst spot compared to other systems in the game I think that you know some players do have a massive commander advantage they do have a massive progression advantage in terms of I mean even armaments right like armaments are RNG completely and so you have to open a bunch of them uh, a bunch of the chests and just get a whole bunch on your account and then you have to do a bunch of transmutations to get the right stuff right and so with that you know players who've had a gear or more in that system their armaments are going to be way better than people that are just getting them now so I do think lots of the systems in the game do need some refining and catching up and it looks like they are working on that and again that's going to be a fine line with making sure that this is done correctly so you don't kind of spit in the face of the older players who've been supporting the game for a really long time now they also touched on Ark of Osiris matchmaking I'm not going to get into this too much because I personally don't play Ark of Osiris but basically the TLDR is like they're working on making matchmaking better which is like okay great like that's what we needed that's what players want hopefully they can get this right here they go on to talk about esports events and personally if you guys you know I, I don't know I, I don't want to offend anybody when I say this if you watch League of Legends or Counter-Strike or maybe Valorant then you might think esports is a big deal and in some countries it is but I got to tell you in the United States esports barely exists anymore it is extremely unprofitable most of the big teams have lost millions of dollars they were funded by venture capital and angel investors and even the most profitable and big ones really like esports is not where they're making their money right so esports in the United States at least is kind of a meme at this point and it'll probably be at least 10 years before people take it seriously again the sector has just been burned so bad and wasted so much money and it didn't take off esports is not a thing in the United States if you are into it understand that you are in a niche 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 of a niche it is really like I can't emphasize this enough don't waste your time in esports new new teams are not getting into esports most games are not successful with esports look at Call of Duty look at Overwatch those leagues don't really exist like they exist but like let's be honest they they pull barely any uh, viewers okay in the grand scheme of things esports in the United States does not matter I know that that is going to be really hard for some people to like here, but that's just the truth. So personally, do I care if they invest in esports? Absolutely not. Do most people care? Truthfully, no. The data is what it is. People don't care about esports in the United States. It might be different in China. It might be different in Korea. I think Korea has a pretty big esports scene. So I'm not saying that's the case everywhere. Um, so there's that. Now, does Rise of Kingdoms as a game lend itself well to esports? No, it does not. Everything that you get on your account is something that you had to most likely pay for. Free to play players will not have a good experience competing in esports. Now, I will say if they create an event where there's in a level playing field and you have absolutely no paid advantage, then maybe you could make the argument that there is an esport to be had there. And they did mention a, you know, like the 15 versus 15 game mode, 30 minute timer for Ark of Osiris, those types of things. I think that's great. I think that if they want to make a game mode like Champions of Olympia, where maybe there's less micromanagement and you only manage one army instead of like, however, what is it, three or something like that, maybe there's something to look at there. So is it possible for them to create a game mode that would be good in esports? Yes, probably. Does it exist in the game now? No. Is esports popular? No. Should they focus on this? Probably not. I think there's plenty of other things that they can be focusing on. As cool as it would be for to have Rise of Kingdoms as a great East. Like, look, I love Rise of Kingdoms. If there's an opportunity to get it on like a bigger stage and be more mass appealing, that would be great. 
but just it is what it is esports isn't what people think it is and it's not what they expected it to be in five to ten years maybe we'll revisit that when the economy is better and money is being flown and and, and pushed into esports but right now it is not objectively it's just not so let's probably focus on other things and really like what they should do is make a level playing game mode that is fun make a game mode that everyone's on the same playing field and people love to play if it's an addicting game mode where people are itching to play it and they're like oh my god this is so much fun this is so good if you can do that then you can start to think about okay how do we make this competitive how how do we take this to the next level but the foundation of esports has to be a good game that is fair that other people want to play and there's a strategic element to it okay right now that game mode i don't think exists in rise of kingdoms that's just me personally if they can do that great but again the focus has to be how do we make a great game mode that's addicting like that's really good that like brings players in it brings players online every day to play with friends that should be the primary focus do how do we make like the most addicting best game mode we've ever made uh if they can do that then you're ready to start talking about esports right now i think that esports is not something that should really be on the table let's move on to some mo more things this question why do you have to delete resources when you migrate uh their answer was to prevent too much cross server you know resource buying and selling and look i get it the reality in my opinion let's if i'm gonna keep it 100 with you guys okay i'm gonna keep it real should you have to delete resources to migrate probably are they effectively tackling the resource selling problem no no they're not they're not it's not even close it's not even close i do want to remind you guys that buying and selling resources uh is technically as far as i know against the terms of service now personally i do feel like resources are a problem in the game players want to fight in kvk and they find that resources are the bottleneck there and so a lot of players will have you know multiple farm accounts and you know that's just not it's not fun to grind farm accounts so look is there a resource problem in the game yes is are there people buying and selling resources i mean look they're talking about it so probably okay but if they want to effectively combat buying and selling resources i don't think that making players delete them for migration is the best way to do that i think that if they want to combat buying and selling resources they're doing a re like i mean i don't know i don't know that much about this stuff right but i would be willing to guess they're doing a really bad job at policing this okay this would be like step like seven eight or nine on the list of ways to combat resource sellers in my opinion that's just me but that's the answer that they gave you can let me know in the comment section below if you agree with that answer or not here they talked about quick markers i think that they are going to potentially do this but they do want to make sure that it is done in a way that doesn't uh make the game too complex on the open field with too much information so that is a great uh thing to to look for i think you know in the example of like league of legends you can like ping a specific spot on the map and you could you know put like you know uh, you know warning or retreat or something like that I think having that in rise of kingdoms would be cool especially to get players to like group up on a ball marker or something like that so we'll have to wait and see how they actually implement this and if it comes to kvk or if it's only going to be in those game modes like Ark of Osiris, for example. Next up, they talked about, you know, getting the ability to have the game calculate how many resources you have, how many days of speed ups you have on your account. I think this is long overdue. There are many other games in this genre that do this for you already. For example, Age of Empires Mobile tells you how many hours of speed ups you have, how many resources you have in your bag at all times. I think that is great. I think I've played other games that do this as well. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but they do this other games do this we need this it's overdue let's do it let's get this done i think that would be really great they also went on to talk about the ability to see the differences in dead troops so for example you know if you have a bunch of deads on your account how many of those deads are tier one units or tier four units or tier five units a lot of kingdom leaders want to be able to see these stats so that way they know if someone migrating into their kingdom is actually a fighter or not and it looks like right now they do not have plans to implement a differentiating variable or differentiating statistics for dead troops similar to how we do it for kill points right right now we can see the kill points for different troop types and i personally like that i like when somebody you know is you know talking in lost kingdom chat and they're saying all this and then they have like 100 and 200 million tier one kills it's like okay you're actually not very good at the game and it's funny that you can kind of make fun of them for that i like that um but it seems like there are players that don't want the dead troop count to be broken up into different tiers i personally don't see a problem with it really all it does is protect those little weasels that like to pretend like they're real fighters when they're not so i don't know why they wouldn't implement this I think they should 
but at the end of the day it looks like they are not currently planning on doing that which is unfortunate now the other thing too is if you're watching this and you don't really understand why they would not do this um you should understand that the percentage of players that want statistics for dead troops like i don't really know how to put this but like most players don't really care about that right like I know it helps for kingdom leadership and all this other stuff. So like, it would it be good for the game? Yeah, it probably would be good for the game. But like, if you're a kingdom leader that is so competitive that you care about that, you are in the 0.0000001% of the game, right? Like there's literally, you know, 150 competitive kingdoms and that's being generous. There's probably not that many, right? It's probably much less than that. In fact, but that means there's probably only a few thousand players that really care about this passionately and it affects them. The rest of the game is just off in la la land doing whatever they want collecting their favorite historical commanders or whatever so most players don't really care about this if i'm being honest with you like if you zoom out and you look at like the whole game it's like okay uh, 99 of players don't care about this so like why waste our time to implement it right i guess i get that should they have it probably but it is what it is next they asked are we going to do mouse and keyboard on tablets or phones i think the question uh, i think the answer was probably not it looks like it's going to be pretty questionable do they need this you know sure it would be great if they did this but i don't know how many players really care about that or want that next they asked about how often do the developers play the game and they said they played a lot here he actually shows a picture of a lot of them playing together and some people were kind of coaching him on some different things and and how different commanders are implemented and things like that so the dev team does play rise of kingdoms okay i think i mean i didn't suspect they wouldn't so it's good to see that but here we we see them acknowledging like yes it's important for us to play our own games so that we know that way we know the problems that players are having firsthand and that's that's good to know that they are actually involved anyway guys that was everything that was covered at the frankfurt meetup so i would love to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section below what do you think about them adding a new tier of unit what do you think about them adding musketeers or you know firearms or gunpowder to the game what do you think about their implementation of vip 19 what do you think about the new possible commander the, the new archer commanders coming in september so end of september most likely i'm very excited to see what the numbers are for those commanders and i will say right now it is september 2nd that i'm recording this video i will be on vacation from september 4th to 10th so any big news that comes out in that window which i suspect it will unfortunately i suspect there will be big news that drops during that window i will not be home to cover that so you will have to watch other content creators do that of course i will probably post an update on my community page at least so if you want to see that information as soon as it comes out make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified when i upload that type of content of course while you're down there drop a thumbs up on this video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and of course while you're down there once again shout out to frogboy for posting posting this video his channel will be in the description below so make sure you go over there show them some love go ahead and subscribe click the like on their video everything like that and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni i will talk to you guys again soon peace